the gravity of the time is such that every new avenue of peace, no matter how dimly discernible, should be explored. Never before in history has so much hope for so many people been gathered together in a single organization. You will provide a great share of the wisdom, of the courage, and the faith which can bring to this world lasting peace for all nations and happiness and well-being for all men. So we are here today with Grace Stanky, who is currently Miss America and is a very accomplished nuclear engineer. Grace, oh. welcome back to the podcast. Well, thank you so much. So excited to be back on yes. Times of Nuclear. I know so many people that listen to it. Oh. It's awesome. Good. It's That's so awesome. awesome. So glad to hear that. <laughs> so, um, you know, you've been on the podcast before and we'll, we won't go too deep into the stuff you've already covered, but we just want to quickly have you recap your background and how you yeah. got into nuclear. Yeah, I'm Miss America 2023 right now. So I'm in this position to help advocate for nuclear, right? Uh, the unique thing about being Miss America is I'm working with a totally separate demographic yeah. from what the nuclear industry typically reaches, uh, which allows for a lot more different conversations to happen in terms of changing public perception. So that's the main goal of my year as Miss America and advocating how I got into yeah. nuclear overall. I'm still a student right now. I'm in my last semester of school to graduate, uh, but I got into it out of spite. My dad told me not to go into it. And as a 16 year old teenage girl, your first instinct when your dad tells you not to do something is to go and do it. And that's what got me into it. But what I say is what kept me in it is the fact that I learned that this industry literally has the ability to change the world. It has the ability to cure cancer, has the ability to create clean, reliable energy for Americans to use and people all over the globe yeah. to use. And I just kept learning about it. I'm like, why aren't more people excited about this? Why aren't more people dreaming about nuclear? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think this week here at WNE, we've just constantly heard the the concept reiterated of energy access is so critical you know clean energy energy exactly. security those are all important aspects but really providing energy for those who don't have it is mm -hmm. so critical and nuclear is the best and most sustainable way to do that exactly exactly so when you set out on your year as Miss America what were some of the goals that you set for yourself in terms of educating uh, folks about oh. nuclear you know I, it's so interesting to think back about where I was about 11 and a half months ago after becoming Miss America right uh, my main goals was really I kind of set some parameters of what I wanted to achieve as Miss America with wanting to interact with X amount of people, wanted to travel to, I believe I had five different countries because I believe that the United States of America is a superpower, right? Yeah. I think Miss America should have the ability to represent the United States as well, which I've been able to do that. The United, the United States Department of Energy invited me as the honorary delegate to attend the International Atomic Energy Agency General Conference, which I was sitting there and I'm like, oh my God, what did I get myself <laughs> into? But it was so cool because what I've realized that I've been able to achieve this year is make sure that youth have a voice and young women have a voice at the table. Uh, as I sit in these international conferences and look at who's making the decisions, I have realized that the people who are making these decisions aren't going to be around to run the plants when they're fully constructed, right? There's just a certain reality of that. So it's been really incredible to make sure that young people still are heard, still are valued, and still are being considered in this equation when we're looking forward to years like 2050 and 2060 when we set these carbon goals. Absolutely. And I hear you're you'll be attending the COP conference next week? Yeah, so I have to go back to the States and then I go back to Dubai. Oh, I'm, wow. So I'm like all over the place, but I'll be at COP. Yes. That's very exciting. And it's so exciting to see nuclear featured at COP this year. I know that's exactly. something that it hasn't had as much of a voice as it should have in years past, but this year with uh, COP being hosted in, in the United Arab Emirates, which is a, a nuclear country, it's so great to see that. Yes. So, um, you know, I, I guess think back to the, the last year. Is there anything that really stands out? Um, any any example of uh, when you sort of shared your your story of why nuclear energy is this incredible incredible tool? Is there something that st sticks out to you as a moment where you felt like your impact was really being felt by an individual or a group? 
Well, I want to share a story about actually a social media post that I made uh, because social media is something anybody can do. And I want to emphasize that for the listeners. This is not something that's specific to me because I know the listeners can do this too, right? Um, I made a social media post about cooling towers and about how it's it's water vapor and it's not, you know, radioactive material coming out of the top of that, uh, which is something that I feel like in the nuclear industry, we're like, okay, yep, we've been over this. Well, that video has already gotten over 5 million. I think it's at 5 million views. I'd have to double check. It's like either 4.8 million or 5 million. Um, And The thing is, is that there was tons of engagement on the post. The candid discussions that happened in that comment section, the amount of DMs that I got of people saying, hey, I'm thinking about going into a career like nuclear now because of this post or because of this series of posts that have been made. Like, thank you. Like, that's something that a little bit goes a long ways. And that's true in nuclear. We know a little bit of, of fuel goes a long ways in terms of producing energy, but a little bit of words and a little bit of action can go a long ways in terms of convincing people as well. Yeah. And so much of the um, fear on nuclear comes from misconceptions. Exactly. So the more that we can uh, correct those misconceptions, I mean, I think obviously there's always going to be people that are emotionally driven against yeah. nuclear, and it's not always easy to change those those um, emotions. But if you can just change folks' misperceptions and educate them on, you know, why nuclear is safe, why why the waste isn't scary, and mm-hmm. and you know, put it on the same level playing field as other energy sources, I think exactly. you can do a lot. Exactly. And that's something anybody can do really Absolutely. is that ability to educate. We've got this wonderful, wonderful thing called yeah. the internet, right? Yeah. Like it is there, it's available. Um, I encourage anybody and everybody to be their own advocate. You know, I know Thanksgiving happened last week, but I've said it since the beginning of my year. In all honesty, start your family Thanksgiving fight. The conversation of changing these misconceptions starts in your own home. It starts in your own circle. You know, you can be the one neutron that starts the chain reaction, if that makes sense, right? You know, you have that conversation with your aunt and your aunt tells her kids and then her kids go to school and tell them about how cool this science is that they learned about from their aunt's, you know, niece or nephew or whatever it may be. And that's... That's something that is so cool is yeah. everybody has that ability to do that. Yeah. And I mean, you shared a- another point that I think is so important to drive home, which is this idea that young people need to be engaging and working in nuclear. Like that yes. is so critical. Uh-huh. You know, uh, the, the nuclear industry. And, and I mean, this conference has been a great example. There have been students here, you know, the last few days. And to see so many young people just even representing their companies has been really exciting, mm-hmm. you know. They are the future. We are the future. I mean, you and I hey, yo, are let's there. Go. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, I think the more that we can, and I think we're also seeing uh, a younger generation really starting to get excited about nuclear. Yes. And that is what is so inspiring mm-hmm. to, to myself and to, I think, a lot of the folks that I work with and, and that I know in this yeah. space. It was really crazy because talking about this and how young people are excited about nuclear. So I am so used to battling not battling, but talking about Chernobyl, talking about Fukushima and talking about spent fuel and talking about safety. Those are the four topics that I spend most of my time discussing with the general public. That's where concerns lie. That's where concerns exist, which are all completely valid. You know, that is a completely valid concern to have. For someone outside the industry, those look like scary things. Um, But it was really crazy because I was giving a presentation to middle schoolers in September and I started talking about Fukushima. And let me tell you, I looked at them And they were looking around at each other like, this lady's on something right now. And I was like, oh my God, it hit me. I'm like, do you guys even know what Fukushima Daiichi is? And they don't. But this is so important to recognize because this allows for us as the current people in the industry to provide that crucial first impression of what nuclear is. We can talk about the whole picture. We can talk about the goods, the bads. We can talk about what it's like to be an employee in nuclear as long as we're open and honest about it. That's what we need. That's what those middle schoolers wanted. And we sat and talked about nuclear all day long. I had all these like fuel pellets that were 3D printed that they were, they went, they went insane for those fuel pellets afterwards. That. So, yeah. that's so That's so interesting. And I mean, I think it is a really interesting concept because nuclear is so simple, really. Like, it is. You Boiling should, water. It's something that you should Ooh. be able to, to explain to kids. I know we always love to say it's just, just you know, water passing over hot rock, right? Yeah. Like it's, Fancy it's, hot rocks, boil exactly. water, steam rises, turns a turbine. Yeah. That's like what I it use. should be something that's so simple. We can teach to kids, yeah. yet it seems so scary and so complicated. And that sort of leads me into my next topic, which is I would really love to talk to you about 
uh, the impact you specifically feel like you've had on women in nuclear and, and inspiring young women to become not just nuclear engineers, but work across the nuclear field. You know, I mean, as someone who's not math and science inclined, mm-hmm. I think it, that was really daunting to me. Yeah. But um, understanding that there's a role for everyone in, in yes. this this nuclear sector and, and anyone who's interested in joining it can and should. Yes, this is something I, I say a lot in terms of there's a place for everybody here yeah. in nuclear. We need technicians, we need engineers, we need managers, we need legal teams, we need literally anybody and everybody on board yeah. to make a nuclear power plant run. Uh, but when it comes to specifically women, you know, I think I, I've had I've had my fair share of sexism. I've had my fair share of bad experiences. Like that's just the certain reality yeah. of it, unfortunately. And I wish change would happen overnight. But the reality is, is it won't. However, what I always ask for is, you know, I had I had an experience this year where someone was was offering me a job and they said, Grace, we really want you to come work for us. One, because you're a woman. And I went, of all of the things you could have said, you chose that to lead with my biological makeup. And it is so frustrating to me that women are put in this box because we're a nuclear engineer or because we're involved in this industry in some way, shape or form, and we're a woman, it's like we're some mythical unicorn. No, we're not, we're human beings. We have so much more to offer. And that's something that I think I really can represent as Miss America is showing that not only am I a nuclear engineering student, but I'm also Miss America. I'm also a D1 competitive water skier, also a classical violinist. Like, like, Heaven forbid we're humans with personalities and multifaceted hobbies. Like that's something that I think has been really crucial to this year in terms of highlighting that uh, women just want to be treated like any other human being, right? Not separated, not isolated, not put on a platform either because of our biological makeup, Uh, but making sure that we're receiving fair and equal treatment. Mm -hmm. And in addition, being respected as a human being in a whole whole picture aspect. Absolutely. That's absolutely true. I will say it has been really exciting to see more and more women joining this yes. industry. Oh my um, gosh, every time I see one, I'm like, eh, let's go. <laughs> it's, it's really great to see. And I hope it's a trend that we we continue to see, we continue to see it grow, especially you know, young women yeah. coming out of school and, and deciding to, to pursue, pursue nuclear. Exactly. Um, so, you know, let's talk a little bit about your next venture. You know, yeah. you're, you'll be joining Constellation um, fairly soon. What specifically are you going to be doing there? Yeah, so I finished Miss America January 14th of 2024, and then I'll be starting with Constellation in March of 2024. I will be doing a very new role, which I hope other companies follow suit in this because I think every company could benefit from a role like this. Uh, primarily, I will be a core design engineer, right? I just got my degree, so I'm, yeah. you know, I'm doing the engineering. Yeah. I want to learn. I want to keep learning about this industry. I want to be at outages and help with that yeah. process, like all of those things. So that's about 60% yeah. of the role. But the other 40% is continuing the advocacy work that I've been doing as Miss America. We've seen the impacts of many, many advocacy groups and many companies putting efforts forward on programs to help promote nuclear. Now it's time that we start defining roles surrounding let's build more nuclear. Let's start supporting nuclear on a public external facing front, not just an an internal like nuclear to nuclear front. We need nuclear to external facing fronts. And I'm really excited because I've already got um, events set up with colleges and with eighth grade girls in Alabama and in Oklahoma and all of these things starting right away in February and in March. That's so exciting. Um, And just to to wrap it up, you know, okay, so we spoke to you a year ago. You're going to continue your advocacy. What do you hope in one year from now you will have achieved uh, in in terms of nuclear advocacy? Well, I, the one thing is like, I want to see I do want to see the percentage of women in nuclear increase. Like, I want to see that number go from 14% to like 16%. Because like I said, I know that this change won't happen overnight. I know that it will take time, but I would love to see those numbers start to increase. Additionally, I want to see ground being broken on building new nuclear. Uh, We have done a lot of talking. I have done a lot of talking (laughs) this year. Let me tell you, let me tell you, 210,000 miles of travel, okay? Um, And I'm at the point where we need to start breaking ground. Uh, We need to start building that workforce in terms of construction, making sure we've got qualified construction people working on building these nuclear power plants. And then they can, in turn, maybe potentially work at those power plants in the future. So that's the that's the main things I want to see within the next year to two years, maybe at the next WNE. Yes, absolutely. Well, Grace, thank you so much for joining us on tape. I appreciate it. Thank you. And initiate at least a new approach to the many difficult problems that must be solved in both private and public conversation. If the world is to take off the inertia imposed by fear and is to make positive progress toward peace.